COVID-19, coronavirus, SARS and cov 2 These three words describe the one thing that has completely turned our world upside down in the past two years. From the way we attended school and classes, to the way we worked and interacted, to even the way we traveled, COVID-19 left no stone unturned. I want you to close your eyes and think about the last time you took a flight or went to the airport. What do you see? You'd probably be thinking about crowded check-in counters, bustling duty-free shops, and airplanes filled to the brim with tourists and business travelers from all over the world. This is no longer the case. I remember traveling to India during the pandemic, from hundreds of planes parked on runways and taxiways to empty airports with employees doused in personal protective equipment. Aviation had come to a standstill. What was supposed to be an enjoyable journey turned into an eerie and deafening experience, reflecting the wrecked state the world was in. So what exactly happened? And what does the future look like? What do you think? On New Year's Eve 2019, Ian Lipkin, a famed Columbia University health scientist, was having dinner with his family when he got a confidential call from a highly placed source in China. He was told that there was a cluster of pneumonia-like illnesses in the city of Wuhan caused by a novel coronavirus. The source said that it was not that big a deal as the virus didn't look very transmissible. How wrong he was. The virus would later re reveal its secrets, wreaking havoc on the city of Wuhan, causing it to be locked down on the 23rd of January but it was too late. COVID-19 had already made its way across China and was on its way to spreading across the globe. With the highly transmissible nature of the virus, countries like Singapore, Japan, and South Korea applied travel restrictions to incoming flights from China. Chinese airlines lost passenger traffic and revenue, but it was thought that this was a short-lived storm. It was definitely not. Commercial air travel had the perfect conditions for the spread of COVID-19. It allowed for the mass transit of hundreds of infected people from a country with COVID clusters to other countries all across the globe. Furthermore, it allowed for the spread of the virus within aircraft. Imagine sitting in an airplane for a couple of hours with people around you having contracted the virus. Although the air is well circulated and filtered, water vapor containing the virus can easily spread to you and cause you to be infected. And that's exactly what happened. People on flights with COVID positive passengers had to be quarantined for weeks and more often than not, they would contract the deadly virus as well. Due to these factors, combined with border restrictions and pressures from authorities, aviation came to a standstill. Hundreds of aircrafts were closed. Thousands of aircraft were grounded and millions of jobs and livelihoods were lost. To put things into perspective, before COVID-19, Changi Airport had more than 3,700 flights departing it per week. After the pandemic hit, this dropped to just 800 flights, merely 20% of the original number. That's staggering. This spelled danger for many aspects of aviation. Firstly, the condition of grounded aircraft were adversely affected. Aircraft are meant to be in the skies, and being on the ground means different temperatures, pressures, and humidity levels than what they're built to regularly sustain at thousands of feet above ground. An airplane on the ground requires more frequent and in-depth maintenance than an airplane flying a few routes regularly. This is why airlines such as Ryanair do ghost flights to keep their aircraft airworthy. Instead of keeping the aircraft on the ground, each aircraft flew up to three times per day with no passengers. However, with increasing fuel prices and airport landing fees, this was unsustainable. With dwindling demand, increasing maintenance costs, employee wages, and parking fees overshadowing them, many airlines buckled under immense pressure. Private carriers were affected the most. They had limited governmental backing, so many of them fell apart like a pack of cards. Airlines such as Virgin Atlantic were bleeding cash from paying for their hundreds of leased aircraft and multiple high interest loans. Eventually, they filed for bankruptcy. And they were not the only ones. The world's second oldest airline, Avianca, also fell prey to the raging predator that was COVID-19. Falling airlines meant losses of millions of jobs of pilots, stewards, and ground staff. 
with many of these employees having already gone months with low pay or none at all. When Avianca went bankrupt, more than 20,000 jobs were lost, leaving many skilled workers and executives unemployed. COVID-19's effect on the aviation industry has definitely been a double-edged sword. On one hand, commercial passenger aviation had come to a standstill, with barely any traffic to sustain it. On the other hand, the cargo freighter industry saw a boom. Pre-COVID, most cargo was carried in the bellies of passenger aircraft. With many of these aircraft grounded, there was a gap in the market. To maintain the lifeline of vital supplies and supply chains around the world, freighter operators kept their aircraft in the air longer to address the shortfall in capacity. In Changi Airport itself, the amount of cargo-only flights more than doubled from 315 to 780 flights per week, accounting for 90% of the flights leaving Changi. Overall, COVID-19 has devastated the aviation industry. However, with the swift rollout of the vaccine and lifting of travel restrictions, it is slowly but surely starting to take off, pun intended. So now what? What's next? And what's going to change? What does the future look like to you? The aviation industry has definitely been turned on its head while it works towards recovery and resilience. Firstly, the use of large people carrier aircraft has become obsolete. In the early 2000s, many thought that the future of aviation would lie in carrying up to a thousand people from point A to point B on a single aircraft. This has definitely changed. Aircraft such as the Airbus A380 and Boeing 747s have become a thing of the past. In a shaky post-COVID world, these high maintenance and low efficiency aircraft, which result in higher costs, have no place in the industry. The future has turned to efficient, medium-sized, long-haul aircraft. Many airlines such as SIA have adopted this strategy, retiring many of its relatively new Airbus A380s in favor of the more viable A350 variants. Secondly, there's an increased priority on hygiene and safety standards. COVID-19 has been a wake-up call to improve sanitation in aircraft and airports. Disinfection is a regular practice on all contact surfaces. Some airlines have even experimented with different seating plans to keep passengers more socially distant to reduce transmission of COVID-19 and any other future virus. Last but not least, we have seen accelerated automation and digitalization. If you've gone to Jewel or Changi's Terminal 4 any time recently, you would have seen check-in counters replaced with screens and automated belts, with some airlines even providing online boarding passes to reduce human contact. These solutions have definitely been effective in the short term, instilling confidence in people to travel without fear of contracting the virus. Although passenger traffic is nowhere near 2019 levels, it is recovering and there is light at the end of the tunnel for airlines with passenger traffic estimated to be back to normal by 2023. With cases reducing across the globe, the aviation industry can breathe a sigh of relief, but not for long. It needs to regroup and focus on the long term. What happens if such an outbreak happens again? What will be done differently to reduce losses? An outbreak like this will happen in the future and it could be much worse. As the saying goes, it's not if, but when it happens. Airlines will need to invest in the future now to remain viable. The way I see it, combi aircraft are the future. These aircraft have the ability to be transformed from passenger to freighter aircraft in a matter of hours. Many airlines use their passenger aircraft to carry cargo during the pandemic, but using combi aircraft on a large scale will definitely be more feasible and profitable in the future. In today's highly connected world, international mobility is the norm, but large global shocks will probably become more frequent. As global aviation rebuilds itself, resilience and agility to change must and will clearly be a top priority. As it was once said, there's nothing permanent except change, and we should be excited for the future of aviation. Thank you.